Hey guys, so a few months ago I did a video where I took a deeper look at the Ram lineup and checked out which trucks the United States and Canada does not get, including the Ram 700, 1000, and 1200. Today is a similar video but for Dodge, looking at some models that are not available in North America but are found elsewhere. So we'll be looking at the Dodge Neon, Attitude, and the Hellcat XR. For each car we will go over all the key details, like where they are sold, the price, specs, power, and other interesting facts and features. So let's get started. The first vehicle on my list today brings back a nameplate that many of us are familiar with, the third generation Dodge Neon. Of course the Neon was around for two generations, 1995 to 1999, and 2000 to 2005, before it was discontinued. In 2016, the production began on a sedan version of the European Fiat Tipo and the Turkish Fiat Ihia, not sure if I pronounced that right, but basically that means there's a new Dodge Neon out in different places in the world right now. After an 11 year absence, for the 2017 model year, the Middle East and Mexican markets got the new Neon. This car is manufactured in Turkey at the Tofas assembly plant, and the Neon competes with other cars in the compact segment, like the Honda Civic, Nissan Sentra, Ford Focus, Toyota Corolla, and Toyota Yaris, to name a few. So the Neon is slightly different for both the Mexico and the Middle East markets, but I'm going to talk about the major features overall which both versions will share. In Mexico, for the 2020 models, the versions are SE Manual Transmission, Sport Automatic Transmission, and GT Automatic Transmission. So that base SE will start at 265,000 Mexican pesos, roughly 13,500 US. The Sport AT will jump up to 310,900, which is 15,900 US, and the top GT AT is 345,900, or 17,700 US dollars. The Middle East lineup is different, where it's just SE, SXT, and SXT+. The base SE will start at 57,000 Emirati dirhams, which is 15,500 US. The SXT will go for 17,400, and the SXT Plus at the top will run you the equivalent of 18,300 US dollars. So the Neon is back just as it was years ago, a very basic, compact, and budget entry level sedan. On the exterior, it has the Dodge Signature grill, regular halogen headlights, and steel wheels on the lower end model. The SE and SXT come with pretty basic features that you'd find in any car, and the options aren't too bad though for a starting price that's in the mid teens. The top model SXT Plus comes with 17 inch rims and 225 45 17 tires, power seats with leather inserts, a backup camera, rain sensing wipers, auto headlights, and tons of safety features like six airbags, cruise control, emergency brake assist, electronic brake force distribution, and more. So again, that's not too bad for the price. When compared to the Dart, this new Neon is 6 inches smaller with 3 inches less of wheelbase. The exterior colors include black metal, bright white, metallic red, grey metallic crystal, and metallic silver. Moving on inside you get a pretty basic Dodge interior with a lot of hard plastics. The base models get a very simple stereo player and 4 speakers, while the top model has the 7 inch Uconnect touchscreen with 6 speakers. You also get a choice of some different cloth, velour, and faux suede seats, and LED interior lighting. According to some of the online reviews, this Neon does very well for interior room, despite its size. It has 520 liters of capacity, or 18.3 cubic feet, and that's 40% bigger than the direct competitors, and it's even 15% bigger than the next level up, which would be the mid-size segment. Some reviewers said that even though they were 6 foot 2, they could fit in the back seat fairly comfortably. As for the performance, all the Neons are front wheel drive and weigh roughly 2600 pounds. The engine choices will differ drastically depending on the markets. The base SE versions in Mexico have a weak 1.4 liter fire inline 4 cylinder with just 95 horsepower, 94 pound feet of torque, and a 6 speed manual. This version is obviously super slow with a 0 to 60 of around 15 seconds. The rest of the Mexican models have a 1.6 liter e torque flex fuel engine with 110 horsepower and 112 pound feet of torque and that will come with a 6-speed auto. The performance improves a bit here, 0-60 to 60 in 11.2 seconds, and a top speed of 192 kilometers per hour. There's also some diesel offerings. The 1.3-liter multi-jet has 104 horsepower and 155 pound-feet of torque, while the 1.6-liter multi-jet goes up to 120 horsepower and 190 pound-feet of torque, but I don't believe those are offered in Mexico. The transmission list includes a 5-speed manual, 6-speed manual, 6-speed automatic, and 6-speed dual clutch, again depending on the market. The gas mileage here is roughly 29 mpg city and 36 mpg highway. 
and the Neon also comes with a 45 liter or 11.9 gallon tank. So once word got around that the Neon was out overseas, naturally North Americans got excited and they hoped this car might return for their market. Automobile Magazine actually reported that the Neon would return to North America in 2018 as a replacement for the previous Dart, but as of March 2020, we still don't have it. Overall, the Neon does many things well without being exceptional in any department, very similar to what the Dart was. The main objective of this car is reliability and keeping costs down. I couldn't find any recent sales figures, but the Neon will likely be more of a niche car rather than overtaking the major volume sellers in the segment. But it does fit in well in the Middle East and Mexico, adding some unique styling, a lot of great features, and good fuel economy at a very low MSRP. The next model up is the tiny subcompact sedan, which is called the Dodge Attitude. Dodge Mexico quietly released this car in 2015, and it's meant to be a direct competitor for the likes of the Toyota Yaris and Ford Fiesta. There was an Attitude sold in Mexico from 2006 to 2014, which was basically a Hyundai Accent with Dodge badging. For the third generation, beginning in January of 2015, the Mitsubishi Mirage, or Atraj sedan, is the base car here that gets reworked into the Dodge Attitude. These Mitsubishi Mirages are everywhere in many different forms, like Sedan, Hatchback, Space Star, Atraj, and G4. Certain models are available all over the world, like Western Europe, Thailand, Philippines, Canada, and the United States. However, as for the Dodge Attitude, that's only out in Mexico right now, and it's more distinguished as a Dodge this time around, and looks way better than the Mirage in my opinion. Dodge Mexico is currently offering four different models for the Attitude. The base model is the SE manual transmission, starting at 223,000 Mexican pesos, or just 11,450 US. The SE with the CVT automatic costs 12,480, and the SXT manual rises up to 13,000, while the SXT automatic it costs over 13700 in US dollars equivalent. And there are five color choices, black, gray, silver, red, and white. Like the Neon, the front of the Attitude stands out with a hexagonal Dodge crosshair grille, but otherwise the Attitude is more or less the same as the Mirage from the A-pillar and back. The car is fairly well featured for its class and price, just like the Neon was. The inside comes standard with all the features that you see on screen, including driver and passenger airbags, air conditioning, a trip computer, front power windows, rear power windows on the SXT, and a rear defroster. The radio is a Sony stereo with a CD player and USB and iPod functionality, and the SE gets two speakers, while the SXT will get four speakers. All versions will have a keyless entry with stop and start button, and the fog lights will be optional. So it is quite loaded up for just over $10,000 brand new. The storage is also very decent with a very big trunk for the size of the car. 450 liters or 15.9 cubic feet. For comparison, the Chrysler 300C has a trunk that is 500 liters or 16.4 cubic feet, which is not much bigger even though that car is over 32 inches longer. Moving on to performance, there's only one engine available here, a tiny 1.2 liter 3 cylinder that has an output of 79 horsepower and 78 pound feet of torque. The manual transmission is a 5 speed, while the automatic as we've said is a CVT or a continuously variable transmission. And as we've seen with the pricing, depending on the models, the CVT will cost you $700 to $1,000 extra. Although this might not be the most powerful car, the Attitude has some seriously good fuel economy, rated at 47 mpg city and 63.5 mpg highway. The gas tank is just 42 liters or 11.1 .1 gallons, but even with that smaller tank, Dodge claims that you can get up to 1200 kilometers or 745 miles per fill up if you're driving mostly on the highway. Up front you can find ventilated disc brakes, while the rear still has drum brakes. There's also an independent McPherson front suspension and rigid rear axle. The SE has 14 inch wheels with 175, 65, 14 tires while the SXT adds a front stabilizer bar, and that jumps up to 15-inch wheels with 185, 55, 15 tires. Dodge has said that they do have no intentions of selling this car in the United States, but boy is it a real solid bargain for the price, for people that want to own a car while being as economically responsible as possible. Now we move on to the last car for today's video, that being the AEC Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat XR 2019, which is basically an American car tuned by Germans, the European market currently faces many issues that take away the fun factor of many sports cars, such as high gas prices, restrictions for lower emissions and less displacement, and less noise. But they do have this powerful Hellcat, 
that is faster than any stock Hellcat in America today. So a Munich based company called AEC is responsible for building these Hellcats and they are an authorized Dodge and Ram importer in Europe. So they are legitimate. FCA does not offer official imports in most of Europe, so there are other authorized importers that customers have to turn to, and AEC is one of them. They've even got a beautiful website too, where you can buy the Hellcat XR. They've decided to create this with just 80 copies released in Europe and 50 of those reserved only for Germany. The price will be a whopping 179,000 euros, which is roughly 198,000 US dollars if you look at today's exchange rates. And keep in mind that the Dodge and Chrysler vehicles normally do have really high prices overseas compared to what we're used to in North America. What AEC did was take a 2019 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat wide body model, which already has 717 horsepower and 656 pound feet of torque, and they attempted to unlock its full potential by adding lots of features and upgrades. First under the hood is a competition tuned 6.2 liter supercharged SRT Hemi V8 with a 2.4 liter twin screw supercharger. It also gets some other upgrades like an upgraded performance pulley, smaller drive ratio, and a reprogrammed ECU along with a new valve controlled AEC performance exhaust system. This car is fully road legal and that custom exhaust system has been custom engineered to the engine all staying within the standard European sound volume regulations, and it's controlled by the touch of a button on the interior. The car also still has the standard ZF 8-speed automatic transmission, which has been slightly modified to handle the extra power, although I'm not exactly sure what they did. But overall, the Hellcat XR is rated at 888 horsepower and 737 pound-feet of torque to the rear wheels, or 662 kilowatts and 999 newton meters of torque, as they would say in Europe. The top speed of the car is 320 kilometers per hour, which is 199 miles per hour. So when you compare that to the normal Hellcats, it's got a gain of 171 more horsepower and 81 more pound-feet of torque. It's even got more horsepower and torque than a stock Demon, but the Demon, if you have racing fuel, does have more torque as you'll see on screen. There were no performance numbers released, but it would be interesting to see how the XR fares next to a Demon on the drag strip. On the exterior, as we mentioned already, this car has the wide body package that we've seen on the American Chargers and Challengers, with 3.5 inch wider fender flares, and the 20 by 11 inch Black Devils rim wheels, with 305-35-20 Pirelli P0 performance tires. You'll see that they've also added a Hellcat XR carbon fiber package, with a carbon fiber performance hood from the Dodge Demon, with a huge air scoop that feeds the engine, custom hood pins, carbon fiber performance front splitter, custom rear spoiler and diffuser, and a lightweight carbon fiber trunk lid and side rockers. The weight numbers weren't released, but I'm sure that all that carbon fiber should help the Hellcat XR shed a few pounds. Up front there is an exclusive XR grille emblem, the air catcher headlights, and the standard Hellcat badges on the front fenders. As for the suspension, they've made an AEC competition suspension kit which replaces the standard Hellcat suspension with racing coilovers that allow you to custom tune the XR's ride height, weight distribution, and stiffness to your own preference. Beneath the wheels are the standard Bembo brakes and huge slotted and ventilated two-piece rotors with four piston calipers in the rear and six pistons up front. The interior's got the other standard features that we're used to, like the 8.4 inch Uconnect touchscreen system, 18 speaker Harman Kardon audio system, heated and ventilated black Laguna leather bucket seats, red seatbelts, a heated steering wheel, rear camera, parking sensors, and a remote start. Of course, many of the European reviews still didn't like the cornering or handling, saying, quote, the Mastodon never feels like as sporty as the Porsche 911 that is capable of attacking corners with great confidence. It is simply too much heft to throw around in the corners, and it can be a touch unpredictable on twisty roads, end quote but they've also praised its straight line speed, saying it is, quote, utterly mental and delivers immense levels of fun every day of the week, end quote. So there you have it, the utterly mental AEC Challenger Hellcat XR, one of the most powerful and insane cars in all of Europe. Living over in North America, it's a bit funny to think that Europe has the better Hellcat version, albeit with only 80 produced, so it is very limited. If you're still watching, you've reached the end of this video. What do you guys think about the smaller, compact Dodge Neon and Attitude sedans, along with the Hellcat XR? I do wonder if there's a market for those much smaller sedans at a very low price point here in North America, but they would have to make big changes to the designs and upgrades to the powertrains to make those cars fit in. 
but I don't see Dodge bringing them over since they are now focusing on positioning that brand to be more performance oriented. Anyways, that's it. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.